As the 2021 Anambra gubernatorial elections come closer, the current reality of the All Progressive Con All Progressive Grand Alliance (APGA) is the tussle between two factions. The All Progressive Grand Alliance National Chairman Chief Edozi Njoku confirmed this when he reacted to the attack on the former governor of Central Bank Charles Soludo, who had expressed his interest in the running for governorship. The leader of the other faction, Victor Oye, has continued to lay claim to APCA chairmanship despite court rulings uh, that upheld Njoku as the leader. Oye claims that to have the support of the state governor, Willie Obiano, pointing out that he appealed against the federal high court judgment that upheld Njoku's election as APCA national chairman. To discuss this further is uh, Tony Ifaya. He is the all Progressive Grand Alliance State Secretary in Anambra State and is also a lawyer. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Ifaya. Thank you very much. All right, great. Um, the report, of course, that there is a faction at the national level of the All Progressive Grand Alliance and there are people in the party that are loyal to Ed Edozie Njoku and uh, there are also those who are loyal to Victor Oye. And... Uh, there seems to, this seems to be a basis for some schemes, uh, you know, within the party. Uh, can you tell us exactly what the situation is right now in your party, especially in Anambra State? Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. As far as we are concerned in Anambra State, there is nothing like faction in the party. The authentic and the only national chairman of APOGA is uh, Chief Dr. Sir Victor Ike Oye. Ensemble. Uh, then there is the authentic national chairman of the party, duly elected at the national convention of the party on the 31st of May 2019. So we don't know Edozi and we don't know where he's coming from. You, as far you, as we are concerned, you do not know him as a member of your party, or you do not know him as the leader of your party. Which one? We don't know him as a member of our party. Talkless for being the leader of the of a party, because I know before the last convention, he was among those six persons that were expelled from the party. The likes of him and one late Mwabweze, and uh, his uh, other colleagues, about six of them. So as I'm speaking with you, we don't see him, we don't recognize him as a member of our party. So are you... But the only thing is... Go ahead. Are you with me? Yes, I can hear you. I said the only thing is that whenever we want to go into an election like this, they will try to come out to cause confusion, especially in Anambra State. But they cannot boast of winning even a award in their own states. 2017, 20, second tenure of uh, Governor Willie Obiano, they came in with one Mr. Abbaso. Came in and they came, they, with this type of trick just to cause confusion in, in, and uh, bring uh, uh, just cause confusion and uh, bring tension into the party. But we have become used to their antics. So, as far as we are concerned in Anambra State, it is the only in Anambra State that uh, Apoga is functioning very well and is only Obi Ano that is the leader of the party in Anambra and in Nigeria. If they are so serious and they want to lead, they should deliver their states to APGA. Hmm, interesting. So you're telling me that APGA is only functioning in a number of states and that every other, every other state where there seems to be a party um, secretariat of APGA, that those people are not necessarily functioning and hence the governor of your state is the leader of the party. Did he run? No. Did he run as a leader of your party? Because I know how party politics is. There should be um, a running for office. There has to be a national working committee. And your governor obviously cannot be in that national work working committee because he is the governor of a number of states. So, uh, except you, you tell you. me otherwise. Let, 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 maybe, you didn't, maybe you didn't understand me. But you, you, you just confused yourself by saying that, in fact, in the whole country, your governor is the leader of the party. That but then, the, in the same, the but in the the same breath, you also told me, me that you me. that you recognize Oye as the party Excuse leader. Excuse me. Excuse me. Before you misquote me, I said that we will have a governor in the only governorship governorship seat we have in Nigeria as a political party is in Anambra State. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't say that we did not have a national working committee or that uh, we didn't have uh, the required spread. After all, Apoga is the third largest political party in Nigeria after APC and PDP. But what I'm telling you, you know, those mischief makers who want to cause confusion whenever election comes or draws near in Anambra state, when they cannot do much in their own states to at least uh, increase the fortunes of Apoga in Nigeria, that's what I'm saying. Do you get me now? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move away from you that. Me. Yes, I totally understand. Let's move away from yes. this. Let's talk about the recent attack on the former governor of the Central Bank, Professor Chukuma Charles Toludo, um, and um, your party's reaction to what happened um, to um, Charles Toludo. What was the reaction of your party? Um, why was Chukuma Charles Toludo such a target? Was he um, too much of a, a force to be reckoned with? What would have prompted that? Uh, you see, my sister, we were, we were dumbfounded because uh, the attack was, uh, there was no reason for that. It was such a, a dastardly act, so cowardly, so myopic, so so sad, and so unfortunate. Why should they attack a uh, 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 governorship as far as who has not even uh, emerged as a candidate, so to say? Who is talking with, who is in his own town, discussing with the youth of his town uh, on the way forward, and they were just parlaying in an interactive session. How should people just come and hoodlums from nowhere come and attack and disrupt, and to the extent of spilling blood in the, in, in, in the world? So it's very sad and very appalling. Uh, Adam Brasley is not known for this type of, uh, type of uh, rubbish. Uh, is it because of policies or what? So we are surprised and we condemn it in the stronger terms. It was not necessary that they should attack uh, Soludo. Uh, other parties are contesting. It's a free for all, but one person must emerge as their governor. And we are ready to contest whoever comes from any other political party. We were as well as bring, in, bring up our best candidates. But even before then, why should they go and attack the young man? Why should they? That is the question. I'm curious, what is the purpose? I'm curious to know because uh, I would like to know if there have been any similar kinds of attacks before uh, in Anambra, any attacks of this nature, because I've never known Anambra to have these kinds of attacks. But um, well, for Abga, have you had any such thing happen before now? My sister, we are surprised. It's only in the days of, uh, in those days, dark days of. Uh, uh, these are other political parties as, as 2004, when some governors were kidnapped in office, uh, when uh, there was mayhem in the, in the Anambra state, when some people went on rampage, burning and destroying pro government properties in Anambra in broad daylight. But that was some 2004, 2005, some days before Apuka came into power. So we don't know whether they want to come back to bring back those days. You know, I don't know. But uh, I can't see it. I can't hear of such an such an act within the shortest possible time. Now, now, going back to um, Mr. Njoku, that you have claimed to not know as um, the leader of your party, he recently spoke to the press and he said that the party was going into the November 6 governorship elections as a united family, and he also said that um, nothing was going to be able to stop that unity from happening happening but how is this going to happen if there are so many aggrieved members especially somebody like you who's claiming not to know him if the party is not seen as a formidable front uh uniting to you know take back that seat or return someone from your party knowing that you are up against the likes of the pdp and the apc how sure are you that your party would be able to clinch that seat at the end of the day my sister we have been we have gone used to the, these the antics you know, they say I was beaten to my shy. This is not the first time that I come on. I told you that in 2017, one Abbaso came up and they paraded himself as the national chairman of Africa. So this is not the first time. They are repeating the same old tricks and the same old So it's no longer new to us. But if there were no cracks in your party, why would there be any, um, you know, division? Because I hear from reports that... Uh, I am telling you that there is nothing like division. Anybody can say there is division. Anybody, some so, some people are, are just uh, troubleshooters. Some people are money mongers. They, they know this is election year. And they, they want something to come out. Maybe by making noise, 
they maybe they talk maybe with time the people come, the government or the party may come for a bargain a discussion but it's not possible because wherever they have gone to we have gone to court and we have watched whatever attempt that even when they clandestinely go to get an order behind that but we have been able to go there and stop them because the real national convention which was supervised by INEC, monitored by IMEC, was the one that elected Chief Dr. Victor Ikoye. Okay. So where did Njoku come up? Who, who monitored, who survived his election as national chairman? He said he did his own in the hotel, in Imo, or in Owere. We did our convention at Professor Dora Akwin, the Women's Health Center, Oka, and INEC came from Abuja and survived it. Hmm. Who survived his own election as national chairman? Ask him. Once again, um, quickly, just because we have very little time to run through this, can you take us through the APCA nomination process? Because you have spoken about the fact that um, Mr. Njoku's was not, uh, his own nomination didn't happen in a number of states. Because I hear, or we know from reports, that several other people have thrown their hats into the ring to contest for uh, the candidature uh, and to be flag bearers of your party for the November 6 elections. Um, and yes. some people have complained about the shadiness going on in the nomination process. Um, have you been privy to that information? Or are you going to tell me once again that there is no problem within your party? Uh, you see, when we get to the bridge, we'll cross it. We are following the INEC timetable. And I know, according to the timetable, we're talking of uh, primaries between 10th of June and 1st of July. That is according to the timetable. Then we have one week, uh, one week, second July to 9th. Then by August, we talk of uh, campaigns and the rest of them. So when we get to the bridge, we cross it. But right now, everything we are moving. We are, we are not aware of, uh, like, I'm the state secretary of Abuja, Anambra State. I'm not aware of any other Abuja office in Anambra State in Oka that uh, is. Uh, is uh, that owes, uh, pays allegiance to Joko Well. So, as far as we are concerned, uh, we are intact and we are peaceful. We are, we are united. Okay. Yes. Africa is one family. All right. Well, I want to thank you very much, Barrister Tony Fire. He's the Secretary General of the All Progressive Grand Alliance in Anambra State. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break and find out what Nigerians have to say about the unending insecurity in the country. After that, I'll be giving you my take. Okay, there's several things to be done, actually, but I'll hammer on one thing. I think one of the reasons these things continue is because there's a lot of impunity. And the fact that, you know, how do you bargain or have conversations with terrorists, with bandits, with badly behaved people? And what government has done over the years is to pander to their ego and pander to their wants and demands. I think that at this point in time, government is supposed to declare war against this group of people. This is a time to let them know that the citizenry is more important than any other thing, than religion, than ethnicity, than anything that is holding them um, bound. Um, one of the things that government needs to do is to revamp the security um, agencies to ensure that they are able to do the work that they're doing and to fish out the bad eggs amongst them because it's becoming very obvious these days that there's a whole lot of intricacies around what is happening with the kidnapping. The other day, a police officer was arrested as amongst the kidnappers. So there, there has to be um, some form of, uh, what's the word now? Finding out before employing or continuous um, investigations, even about the people within the security forces so that they can do their work effectively. Well, it's not only happening in the north, it's happening also in the south. Killings are going on, abduction and kidnappings. It's just a sign of failure of security to a large extent. So what the government needs to do is to beef up security, to put more funding to security, and to look at strategies. I think a community-based security strategy should be the way to go where the community themselves will be able to protect themselves, 
we'll be able to do more surveillance and be able to do some intelligence gathering instead of relying on forces, security services that are outside the community. I think that is the best way to go. That will go to a large extent in dealing with the situation. Here's my take. Insecurity has become a regular news item in Nigeria. It's almost becoming a new normal. Every day, 100 or 300 have been abducted or killed, and governments will be talking tough. Yet, these occurrences that could have been avoided continue. It's safe to say that our government and security agencies are yet to learn the act of proactiveness, as opposed to being on top of the situation, as they always readily say when they speak to the press. When we hear those words and see actions backing them, maybe we'll start believing that our leaders prioritize our safety over everything else. It's becoming tiring to say the same thing over and over and over again. Why, I mean, why would we use the same tactics again and again, hoping that it works out or gives us a different you know, output or whatever we desire? Of course, it's time for us to step up our security and stop making these criminals feel powerful. All state governors have to rise to the occasion and put a stop to this violence. I am Mariana Cohn, thanking you for watching. Do have a good evening.